Hey guys, so this is a tutorial for calorie counting in Excel. I'm actually using OpenOffice here. You could also do it on a Google Drive spreadsheet if you prefer. So with a new sheet, we're going to want to name our columns. We want the name of the food, the serving size, And then we're going to do the macronutrients, so protein and grams, carbohydrate and grams, fat and grams, and calories. I like to keep it simple. Uh, if you're worried about your sodium intake or lack of fiber, then those are extra columns you could add. Next, you need to decide how many different entries you're likely to need in a single day. So here I'm scrolling for about 12 foods. And then below that, I'm going to write total. Just as a marker for where the totals would go, I'm going to put a zero here under protein, carbs, fat and calories and those are things I'm going to edit later. So we'll enter our first food. Uh, I like to leave a one line gap so it looks a bit neater so I'll go one row down and enter let's just say breakfast. Next I'm going to put the serving size we'll say 100 grams doesn't matter here this is for your own reference and then the protein content so we'll say it was 11 70 and 5. Now, uh, instead of entering calories every time, I like to use a formula here. So we're going to click in the calorie cell and we're going to press equals. Now, protein and carbohydrate both contain 4 calories per gram. So I'm going to write 4 and then star, which is the multiplier. Uh, you'll get that from shift and likely 8 on your keyboard. So hold down shift and press 8 and you should get a star. And then I'm going to click on the cell I want to multiply by 4, which is protein. I'm then going to do plus. And then I'm going to do 4 star carbohydrate. Plus, now uh, fat is more energy dense. It contains nine calories per gram. So we're going to do nine star and then the fat content. And then if I press enter, it should add up correctly. Now you only need to enter that formula once to get it to appear for all the cells below. I'm going to click on the cell and then move your mouse pointer to the bottom right hand corner. Uh, there'll be a square there. If you hover over the square, your arrow might change to a cross. So we're going to click down the left mouse button, hold it down, and then we're going to drag down. And we're not going to cover the zero at the bottom, okay? So not that. We're going to come up one or up two if you want to leave a gap and release. Now obviously there's nothing entered here so all your values should be zero. To test if that has worked we can go to the next row make sure that it's got nothing in it at the moment enter one then enter and that should come up as four because that's your multiplier. On the next row you can try carbohydrate enter one and that should come up with four and then fat one should come up with nine. There we go. Just going to delete those, so highlight, delete, and in Office, uh, you have to put OK. Now we can try the formula out by adding a second item here, so we'll call it lunch, and we'll say it was two pieces of whatever it was we were eating. And then I'm going to put some numbers in. So if I put 25 in, I'm 
then I press the right arrow to get to the next one. So you'll notice now that 25 times 4 is 100, so it's calculating for you that there are 100 calories. Uh, this is a nice quick fix if you're entering 10 foods every day, then it saves you time. So we'll pop in some carbohydrate and some fat, and you'll notice we've got 415 calories from that meal. So you might notice at the bottom here that our totals aren't doing anything. That's because I've just entered the number zero and I've not done any formula. So we're going to do another formula. I promise it's the last one. So we're going to do equal sign and we're going to write sum. So S U M. And then we're going to do open brackets, which is shift and the nine key on your computer. And then we're going to click and drag what we want to sum up. So we're going to go to the first entry for the protein, click down the left mouse button, hold it down, and we're going to drag. As with the calorie column, we're not going to drag all the way to here. It won't let you, so come back up. You can go one before and release. And then we're going to need an, a closed bracket, which is shift and zero, press enter, and it should have added up those numbers. So as you can see, 11 plus 25 is 36. Instead of entering it all here, we're going to do the same trick as we did with the calorie column. We're going to click here where we know the, the formula, go to the bottom right where the big square is, click the left mouse button and hold it down, and we're going to pull it across to cover the other three rows. There we go. You can check that it's done this correctly by clicking here and then clicking in the top part here where the formula is on the input line. If you click, it should have a colored rectangle showing you all of the cells that it's adding up for you, okay? Um, if you have clicked on this, the best way to get out of it is to press the escape key. If you press around here, it will start changing your formula and it gets confusing. So just press escape and it will go back to what it was. So we're going to need a little more space for the food items. So between A and B, your, eye, your mouse pointer should change to this symbol here. I'm going to click down and drag across to make that column bigger. I'm going to add a few more foods just to make it look nice. If you want to make it look more presentable, you can click and hold B above serving, drag across so that all your columns are highlighted, and then come up here into the toolbar and click on the button which should say uh, center or align center when your mouse is over it. Another addition you could add is some target values. So if you're counting calories, it helps to know what values you want in the day. So we're going to go below total and enter target. And for me, I try to get 130 protein. 230 carbohydrate and 65 fat. You'll notice that isn't filled in yet. That's because the formula hasn't copied down. So we can pick any of these zero values, right click, copy, left click here to highlight the cell and then paste. Now we want the total and the target cells to look a little bit different. So we're going to highlight across here for the target cells and then we can click bold up here, the capital B. And we can also go to the capital A next to the paint can and go to the drop down arrow and choose a different color. Now you're likely going to want to record more than one day's worth of food. So in the top header here, we can change it to food dash and then the day. So today for me is Wednesday. 29th of March and click enter and then we're going to copy all this information below 
rather than type it out again. So click on food, drag across to highlight all of your stuff. Right click, copy, and then where you want the food to appear, we're going to go down and we're going to go two below the target cell, left click to highlight the cell, right click, paste, and that's your information there. The first thing you might notice is that the date is obviously the same, so you'd need to click on the cell here, go into the input, highlight the bit you want to change, so we're going to change that to Thursday, 30th of March, and press enter. The second thing you'll notice is that your food has been copied, so if it wasn't blank before it's going to copy that. So we're going to click and highlight. We're not going to highlight calories because that is a formula, so we want to keep that there. So we come across just to here and press delete. So that's it for the basics, but I'm going to show you uh, three more tricks you can do to make your life easier. So the first one, if you were eating baked beans today and you'd eaten the same serving size yesterday, you can come up, you can highlight the beans, don't highlight calories, again, you don't need to. I'm going to use the shortcut key this time, so Control and C will copy something. And then I'm going to come down I'm going to put where I want it to go and use the other shortcut key, Control V, to paste. The second thing I can do is go down to the bottom here and where it is Sheet 1, I can go to Sheet 2, which should be blank. I'm just going to make this row a little bit wider. And then we're going to go Food Database. And in here you can just paste in foods that you eat quite regularly and that way when you eat them again you can just come to here instead of scrolling back up to find the last time that you ate. So I'm just going to copy in a few of my own foods. Now say I had some mackerel on the Thursday, I can highlight this text here, control C to copy, come back to sheet one, say I had it with my beans, I would go here, click on the cell and then control V to paste it in. The third issue you might have is if you have a lot of different foods in one day, you might find that you run out of space. So say we had two more foods that we'd want to eat here, but there's only space for one. What we do then is to go to the cell here at the side, right click and choose insert row. By default, the program will add one so if you need more, you can right click again and insert row for as many as you need. To make sure that the formula has copied properly, we go from protein. So we're going to go to the bottom cell here where it should be adding it up. We're going to click here. And then we're just going to click on the input line to make sure that your rectangular box has covered all of the items. And then escape to get out of that. So that's your tutorial complete. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to know what your protein, carb and fat intake should be, you can check out my other videos and I give some good basic guidelines. Thank you for watching. Cheers.